In this video, I'm going to completely redesign the two main bosses for Minecraft, the Wither and the Ender Dragon. Not that there's anything wrong with them, I just had some very good ideas, like giving the Wither spider legs. You know, actually, that that's a terrible idea. Now, did this take me an unreasonable amount of time to make? Yes. But was it worth it? Absolutely. I always start off by finding some concept art so that I at least have some idea of what kind of nightmares I'm going to have. I ended up finding some from this mod that has a lot of really cool designs called the Betweenlands. The models, especially for the mobs, are a lot more complex than the original ones, and I thought it would be interesting to steal it too take inspiration from this style. The first one I'm going to try is the Wither. It'll be pretty similar to the original one, except probably more deformed, bigger, add spider legs, who knows. I started by blocking out the body, which is actually pretty similar to the original, except there's a lot more segments to it. After that, I added on the heads and made sure the jaws were separate so they can open and close. Now I know it sounds like a bad idea, but I'm curious. Let's see how it looks with spider legs. What could possibly go wrong? Oh wow, that makes me so uncomfortable, I love it! Right now everything is way too blocky, so I created some random teeth and other extrusions on the head. Little details like that are super quick, but make a massive difference. Hey, that reminds me of something else that would be super quick, but make a massive difference. Anyways, the design is making progress, but it was nowhere near done. To get back on track, I wanted to start mapping out the colors to kinda see what I needed to do next. So I used a color palette technique for the basic parts, and then a more advanced phase mapping technique for the more detailed sections later on. This shouldn't take too long, probably about 15 minutes. Well, I'm never doing that again. Now that the basic colors are added on, I made the eyes and mouth glow for a dramatic effect. I made sure the materials are set up really well, so you can change the eye color really easily. This of course is because it's actually the Razer RGB Gaming Wither, available now for the low price of $69.99. There's still some optimizing to do, but first I want to animate it to see it running around using its cute new spider legs. I've done a lot of 3D modeling, but I haven't done much animation, so I pretty much had to learn it from scratch for this video. Now, some people would say that learning animation takes a lot of time and that you really shouldn't rush through. Unfortunately, I looked through all three dimensions and I'm still unable to find who adds. Minecraft mobs usually have pretty simple animations and get more complex the larger the model for the most part. Spider. Using an actual spider as reference, I began to work on the animation. Wait, did, did that spider just move? No longer using an actual spider as reference, I started on the legs which move in an alternating pattern and Blender has tools to repeat the same motion over and over, so it wasn't so difficult. Next I made the body sort of slither around because before it was just kind of sitting there not really doing anything. By the way, I want to thank Skillshare real quick, they made this video possible and they offer thousands of classes including the modeling and animating that I do in my videos. Think 3D art, illustration, uh... Whatever this is pretty much anything you can think of now I've been making videos for a while now, but before I made videos for YouTube I was actually making them for Skillshare. Uh Oh, is that a trade offer? Skillshare receives $10 a month. You receive infinite wisdom on what you want to learn. <laughs> That's a great price. Okay. So Blender is the program I use for most of my stuff. Yes, mostly because it's free, but also it's very good at what it does. And Skillshare has about 500 classes for Blender, like this one by Remington Markham. The first 1,000 people to sign up using my link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your creativity. Back to animating. I added some random animation patterns to the head and the jaw, and it's looking pretty disgusting, which is pretty much exactly what I wanted. Now, if hypothetically this was actually going to be used for a project, you'd want to put some more effort into the animation. However, no thanks. For a final image, I had to look around for a map to potentially use as a background. This of course involved hours of very hard research, very focused, definitely not goofing off for several hours in a row. After looking for a while, the perfect backdrop ended up being this map right here. Or should I say, our map right here. I brought it into Blender using a method I learned in this video where I redesigned the Enderman in the Iron Golem. Hey, wouldn't it be crazy if you were to go and watch that video after this one? Now, this is where I fell off the deep end. I spent a few hours messing with the blocks, making the water look decent, making the torches actually glow, and eventually I just realized that being a perfectionist isn't the right way to go and you can't obsess over small details like that. For Why is the metal part of the rail not reflective? It's metal. I decided I didn't really like the white glowing eyeballs. I'm just gonna change the color real quick. So basically it's an ender wither, so it's got purple eyes and it would spawn if you put the dragon egg on the beacon while it's lit up. Anyways, after giving it some depth of field, I animated it moving towards the camera. So before I show you the ender dragon I made, 
Here's the original Wither model, and here is the redesigned version. I also made some desktop backgrounds for it, because if you don't make a desktop background, did you really do the project? Did it actually happen? Probably not. So one has a quite large version attacking the theme park map, and one is up close on the face. If you want these backgrounds for yourself, that's too bad! Just kidding, you can download them from the Discord. Daniel Craft Splinter Cult, such a nice place. Alright, now it's time to do the Ender Dragon. My idea for this one is an obsidian-based dragon with magma crystals. There's not as much reference material for this one, so we're going in blind. I started by checking out the original dragon model. It's pretty cool, and I'm pretty sure it's the most complex out of all of them. I remade it with some slight modifications to make it a bit bulkier and started adding unique parts, like horns made out of small blocks. The other unique spot is the eyes, which are now on the side of the head and are also made of little blocks. To top it off, I added little crystals along the neck and the tail. The original idea was to get some sort of stegosaurus type thing, but it just didn't look right, so I put them on a separate layer like a responsible adult just in case I need to use it again. Psych! Straight to the Shadow Realm! Now it's time for colors. For the crystal parts, I made part of them glass and part of them glowing. I used special shader techniques to randomize it across all the crystals, and there's also a nice little section to change the overall color. This, of course, is because it's actually the Razer RGB Gaming Dragon. But then I made a discovery. Something that would revolutionize texturing forever. I figured out that you can paint not only colors, but entire textures. It's not much of a discovery. I should have known that a long time ago. Finally, we are reaching levels of laziness that shouldn't even be possible. I can literally take an obsidian texture and paint it all over the body of the dragon now. If I had figured this out just a day earlier, I could have saved two hours of, of this. It's finally coming together, and if you zoom in, it really shows all the nice details, but the background is looking pretty plain, so I decided I had to put another Minecraft world there. It's actually looking pretty good, it's just hard to see the obsidian on it. So I did a super simple and easy fix, where the normals get slightly perturbed along their local coordinates based on a grayscale texture. How exactly did I do that? Well, that's a great question. Finally, the dragon is complete. For final touches, I cleaned up the block textures, added some depth of field, and the inner dragon is now all done. Here is the original model, and here is the redesigned version, and here is the next video. Please watch it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.